Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Interests of Intraoperative ICG Fluorescence in Liver Transplantation. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You may have joined the presentation listening using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select phone call in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Eric Viber. Since 2007, Dr. Viber has been an academic surgeon at APHP, which specializes in liver surgery and transplantation at Paul Bruce Hospital, Wilshire. He is currently a full professor, PUPH, and researcher in surgical innovation, connecting people arising from different worlds, especially engineers and surgeons, to reinvent practices in surgery. He has had 165 publications on liver diseases. He manages a team devoted to digital innovation, liver surgery, and transplantation focused on hemodermic mathematical simulation using intraoperative real-time quantification of ICG fluorescence. And now, without any further ado, over to you. Uh, hello, everybody. It's a pleasure and uh, thank for the invitation to speak about ICG fluorescence imaging liver transplantation. I work in the Paul Booth Hospital. It is a large hospital in France that uh, uh, done around uh, 200 liver transplantation by year. We do uh, mainly uh, cadaveric liver transplantations, and we have a long history of uh, this technique in, in France. So I will speak about uh, these new technologies that we try to use in the, the field of especially cadaveric liver transplantation. So uh, as you know, probably uh, ICG fluorescence imaging in this liver transplantation have been mainly used in the field of uh, living donor. And uh, on this slide, you see that uh, there is a very good visualization of uh, the bile duct convergence and it allow to uh, cut the bile duct exactly in the good position in, this, in the field of a living donor. <clears throat> and this is a recent paper published about this field, but there is a lot. And uh, uh, my objective today is not to speak a lot about uh, this type of uh, interest of ICG because finally it is interest of ICG in the field of laparoscopic hepatectomy. So uh, this is uh, our strict uh, preoperative protocol in Paul Booth Hospital. Uh, but at the end of your transplantation, we do uh, systematically an echocardiogram of the graft, and we check uh, the presence of uh, arterial, portal vein, and US signals. And uh, recently, we have uh, used contrast on cell ultrasonography to check only the hepatic vein because we have published that there is no interest of this technique uh, for the artery, uh, and uh, probably uh, drawbacks uh, of this technique because it was too sensible to see the artery. So <clears throat> we do also a pressure control with the anesthetic producer connected to needle uh, to be able to check the portal pressure under portal in the vena cava. And uh, now from around uh, three years, we use systematically a uh, near infrared camera with intraoperative ICG flush into the central vein catheter uh, to evaluate uh, the vascularization of the liver and uh, the pattern of parenchyma fluorescence. But obviously, this is very important. This is a non validated technique and only exploratory technique because uh, it is uh, very important to, at this step, don't take a very important decision according to this result uh, before it was totally validated. Uh, uh, they, however, it could be uh, used if you have several uh, signal uh, of the problem, uh, but it is not only uh, the near infrared camera with using ICG that could be used uh, to uh, make a decision. It is uh, the association of several uh, examination and uh, the ICG could be one. And uh, postoperatively, we do uh, ultrasound daily uh, from uh, day zero to day five and systematically 
a CT scan at day seven. This is uh, an example of uh, ICG camera uh, at the end of transplantation. We inject a very small dose of uh, ICG and you see the artery very well. And after the parenchymal opacification and on the deep uh, here, you see uh, the, the portal vein here that uh, uh, appear. And uh, uh, we have assessed uh, in the first period of our study uh, the parenchyma opacification on the uh, only um, on, uh, quality, meaning we don't have to do a quantification, we have only assess uh, the feature of um, uh, fluorescence, it means homogeneous or not. And uh, as I've said, there is two periods in my hospital about ICG near, near infrared imaging polvos. The first one, it was a qualitative period where we have assessed around 72 patients and we will show this result. And after we do a quantitative period and uh, because of, uh, of our first result, we want to assess uh, more accurately uh, the fluorescence to be able to predict uh, the post uh, liver function graft. So this is a result of the qualitative period. This is a normal uh, fluorescence. You see that the graft is uh, totally homogeneous. There is uh, no uh, difference between uh, the right part and the left part of the graft. And uh, this video at the opposite, you see that uh, there is clearly a demarcation between uh, the left part and uh, the right part. There is obviously more uh, fluorescence on the right part. And this could be uh, associated with a vascular problem. It is, could be an outflow block or a portal, uh, portal vein obstruction or an, a thrombus. So it is necessary in such situation to check the portal vein and the portal trunk. This is uh, a good uh, example of the interest of uh, ICG. Yes, uh, it is a patient that uh, I've been uh, transplanted and you see that there is a problem with very, very small artery here and there is uh, thrombosis on low flow in the right hepatic artery. Uh, it is a patient who has been transplanted. There is a continuous ear uh, of the artery, there is no problem on the main artery, and we want to reconstruct this artery. The risk is to uh, destroy uh, the artery that function. So we have decided to take a gastroepiploic artery, and you see we have checked the flow into the right gastroepiploic artery, and we want to use this artery to uh, do a make shift uh, on the right side of the liver. And it is important to, to, to assess uh, the uh, the flow into this very small artery cut. So we have decided to cut here with a video. And this is after the construction, you see that the area here, uh, the small artery that's been connected with uh, the right branch of the artery. And uh, it is very difficult to, uh, to palp a flow and to feel a flow in a very small artery to see a pulse. And uh, it is a, a good example of, uh, of the interest of ICG. You see here the first, the first uh, artery, artery that is uh, totally patent, and we have created a new one uh, with uh, the gastroepiploic artery, a very small artery uh, that could be evaluated uh, thanks to the ICG. The uh, sec third example of a very poor situation, it is a patchic-like uh, fluorescence. This is a patient with a very early uh, massive cytolysis uh, that uh, necessary uh, re redo liver transplantation. This is a PNF. And uh, after, uh, the, this is another example with a, a severe liver dysfunction. And you see the artery and the, the portal vein here. And there is a delay of the fluorescence of the liver parenchyma. Uh, and this is not uh, massive cytolysis, but you see uh, there is a delay and uh, it's necessary uh, re uh, new liver transplantation day seven. We will discuss about this type of feature later in the presentation. We have published uh, this first result in the HPB journal uh, one year ago, and we have uh, seen that finally uh, there is 
a patchy-like perfusion of the liver that could be associated with a high risk of uh, primary non-function. And this is a first interesting result about uh, the qualitative aspect of the fluoroplacent pattern was predictive of primary non-function. And uh, as an example, in this patchy-like perfusion, there is uh, a lot of patients with early uh, um, low function, but uh, and two PNFs that uh, required a transplantation, a retransplantation. And in this situation, you see that there is a not homogeneous uh, liver, and it is uh, due to a problem with the portal vein or a problem with the outflow block and or from the artery. Obviously, if there is a problem with the artery, uh, the differentiation was less uh, obvious because there is a portal vein and there is um, uh, a different but not enough, uh, not so uh, evident. So it could be very useful uh, notably when you have outflow block of portal vein block, and to see uh, the artery, you need to check the artery itself, uh, as I have uh, shown before. So uh, this is the second period. This is the second period where we have decided with uh, uh, my team and uh, the company uh, Fluoptic to uh, evaluate uh, the quantification, the accurate quantification of the ICG uh, at the end of liver transplantation, and initially we want to uh, evaluate the excretion of uh, ICG uh, according to time, because we want to assess if it is possible to, to, to use this parameter to uh, define the liver function. But uh, it was uh, finally not interesting because it is very, very long to occur. So it is absolutely necessary to focus our quantification on this part of the curve, meaning of the liver perfusion. So uh, we do all this uh, uh, study with a, a very strong collaboration with mathematicians, and uh, we have an old history with in silico modelization with uh, 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 Dr. Irene Villon Clementel, that it is a mathematician from INRIA, and we have uh, developed some models and methods uh, to assess the liver function according the fluorescence dynamic measurement of the liver tissue. This is uh, the type of curve that uh, we have observed uh, after uh, uh, this uh, liver transplantation. This is the uh, patient with a liver transplantation complicated by primary function. And uh, uh, you see that there is, there is very high hepatic artery and there is most of the time a delay a delay between the perfusion ear of the of the of the of the liver. This is the liver. This is the quantification of the liver. This is the quantification of the artery, and this is the quantification of the portal vein. And you see uh, that uh, when you have a patient with a primary non-functions, uh, there is a very, uh, there is a delay, and we've uh, evaluated initially this delay. And this is the same the same patient with a redo liver transplantation to treat the PNF, and you see that, that the curve was a little bit different. And uh, uh, initially in our study, we have focused our study in the delay of parenchyma announcement after arterial and portal, portal peak of fluorescence. And you see here that it is in the first situation where it is necessary to do a retransplantation. We observe a delay. Uh, here, 20 sec 29 seconds, and here after retransplantation, 13 seconds. So we think that the delay was very interesting, but uh, we will see after that finally it is not probably the good witness. And this is an example. This is the patient with uh, liver transplantation complicated by primary function. There is a fluorescent very high of the hepatic artery, and you see the portal vein, but there is a very, very uh, long occurrence of the parenchyma and uh, a long time to occur of the parenchyma. And uh, this is uh, an aspect of uh, a patient with a primary non function. Next, yes, uh, you see here, this is the same patients. Uh, and uh, there is a, a short delay, early stage of fluorescence, and the preparation was very homogeneous and more quickly. So, uh, this is a first uh, way to evaluate. Uh, uh, the risk of uh, a PNF when there is a very, very long delay uh, to occur of fluorescence. But we will see after there is uh, probably more interesting feature 
evaluated to predict the risk of PNF. So our main objective uh, was to quantify during liver transplantation the ICG fluorescence of the revascularized full liver graft and to predict the graft survival. This is our main objective, and uh, I will show you this result. This result will be very soon uh, uh, published in the probably in a liver transplantation journal, we hope. And uh, we have uh, read this paper with Damien Doucet. Uh, this is a student that I've done uh, these two works. So uh, this is the curve that I have uh, shown you before. So this is the fluorescence intensity according to time in seconds. So we see here the hepatic artery, and here the portal vein, and here, uh, excuse me, here the yes, portal vein, and here the parenchyma that uh, increase uh, uh, according to time. So uh, we work with mathematicians, and we have been able to create a mathematical modeling of the fluorescence intensity curve. And uh, this is uh, the uh, formula of uh, this mathematical modeling. And there is several parameters. Uh, and it is possible to uh, this uh, parameter with uh, these tools. And finally, uh, we have a, a, norm, a theoretical uh, curve. And we have an observational curve, and uh, we will see that it is important to uh, check uh, the observation according uh, to uh, the uh, um, modeling side and the curve. And uh, we will see after that this parameter, especially uh, this parameter, could be a predictable of uh, the PNF. So uh, this is our patient methods. So we have done a quantification of uh, fluorescence analysis in around 100 patients. But finally, we need to exclude 26 patients because of technical problems on polyvore exposure. And globally, we have, at the end, uh, 76 patients with uh, liver transplantation, full liver graft, and unusable quantitative analysis of ICG fluorescence. So uh, this is a comparison of two groups of patients uh, according to the necessity to perform a uh, real liver transplantation because, because of PNF. And when you uh, compare these two groups of patients, there is two parameters that are differ between these two groups. This is a cold ischemic type, more important uh, in the patients with uh, primary liver function and um, uh, macrosteatosis, and it is typically this type of graft with uh, high risk of PNF, and it's confirmed on these uh, two parameters. So this is the only difference between these two groups of patients. So uh, uh, we have uh, evaluated if the delay of uh, and the intensity of uh, fluorescence according to times uh, could be predictable of uh, the postoperative liver function. It was not so simple because it was not possible to uh, detect any uh, difference between the patient with real T or not real T group. So it is not so simple to uh, check only the delay. So <clears throat> finally, uh, after uh, modeling uh, the fluorescent work with the hospital, uh, with the clinic, with the mathematician, we have uh, evaluated uh, several parameters in these models, and uh, we are able to have parameter of this equation. This is this one uh, at uh, 150 seconds. That could be a uh, difference between uh, the patient with real T and the patient without real T. It is uh, a difference uh, on the two groups. As an example, uh, here, this is a patient that have been not retransplanted. It means that there is a, a curve of the observational and uh, normal curve that is exactly on the same on the same situation. And at the opposite here, you see that the observational was not so important that normally it occur. And uh, we are in the situation with a risk of real liver transplantation. And it is interesting because we think initially that more uh, the uh, fluorescence go uh, very higher and very quickly in the liver. It is, uh, it is a, a sign 
of a good liver function, but it is not true. It is not true because you see that in such situations, there is a, 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 a very, very uh, 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 short delay of, uh, uh, excuse me, this is this one, this is this, is this one. You see, uh, this is a delay uh, on, the, on the fluorescence. So uh, globally, to, to summarize, uh, we are in front of a situation where with very slow announcement of uh, uh, the fluorescent, it's a good witness of a uh, good liver function. So uh, on these equations, we are able to observe that the parameter of the equation was uh, associated with the risk of uh, graft survival at three months. And this is a rock curve analysis. And uh, this uh, uh, rock curve shows that this parameter of the equations was also associated with a good uh, rock curve uh, for graph survival three months. And after that, we want to assess if uh, this parameter uh, that could be uh, detected uh, according to the increasing of uh, the ICG in the liver could be uh, predictable not for uh, the graft of survival at three months, but at 10 days. And you see that it works also. And uh, there is clearly a difference between uh, this group and this group. And this is a significant. And uh, when we evaluated uh, the analysis, uh, the risk here, you see that it's work with the cold ischemic times that we know it is, it is uh, main factor of uh, polyver function, but uh, the odds ratio of this parameter was more important, and it clearly this parameter that we could calculate according to the uh, increase of the uh, fluorescent into the liver was predictable of uh, the graph survival at 10 days. So this is the error curve that confirmed a good uh, specificity and sensitivity. sensitivity. So uh, uh, we want after to, to evaluate if uh, this uh, ICG <coughs> uh, during the transplantation could be used as a tool to evaluate uh, splontnic perfusion before and after liver transplantation. <coughs> as you know, there is some situation with portal hyperperfusion. It is a small foresight syndrome or sometimes the splenic artery syndrome when there is a very high flow into the portal vein and there is, as a consequence, uh, uh, con uh, con uh, vasoconstriction of the artery into the, into the liver. So we want to assess if uh, uh, there is a way to evaluate the risk of uh, this portal hyperperfusion, hyperperfusion uh, with ICG. And at the opposite, we want to assess if there is a risk of portal hypoperfusion and total, uh, for example, a portosystemic shunt that uh, we don't have seen uh, on the CT scan before, or a very uh, small portosystemic shunt, or a lot of portosystemic shunt that it could be uh, responsible of portal vein steel syndrome, or uh, sometimes it could be interesting to check if it is more interesting to use uh, this shunt to perform a renal portal transposition rather to the porto portal anastomosis. And uh, we want to evaluate, and this is our uh, study now, uh, the interest of ICG in such a situation. So uh, we do that for the moment. We evaluate not on the graft, but on the initially uh, liver. So it is a cirrhotic liver, you see. And <clears throat> we want to assess if there is a correlation with the portal front portal pressure. And we use the step technique. We would put the, set, the ICG camera around 20 centimeters in front of the operative field, and we check uh, the arteries, the part of a small bore on the liver. This is a movie uh, that uh, demonstrated this. This is a patient with cirrhotic patients. We see initially the artery, and we see the bowel, and we see small uh, artery on the liver. And we see the portal vein here, and you see here the liver after. And uh, the objective is to assess the quantification of ICG not only on the portal vein and on the artery and on parenchyma, but also on the small bowel to evaluate 
the consequences uh, of uh, portal systemic shunt and to see how we modify uh, the hemodynamics of the bowel uh, after the liver transplantation and to check that there is a normalization of this uh, dynamic according to ICG perfusion. So uh, this, is, uh, this is an example of uh, uh, the flow that we assess. This is the artery, this is the portal vein, and this is the gut, this is the bowel, and this is the uh, liver here. So uh, we uh, now evaluated this pattern of this tree curve to, uh, to define a normal situation. And as an example, it is obviously evident that there is an hepatophagal portal flow uh, before. And you see here uh, the uh, movie. You see there is a gut uh, with a high vascularization. And uh, this is the liver. And we see never the portal vein here, meaning that there is a very, very high uh, hepatophagal portal flow. And uh, we'll see uh, the curve. You see here that there is a very high uh, uh, opacification of the bowel when you do quantifications, and very uh, uh, normal uh, for the uh, artery. This is the parenchyma of the liver, and it is interesting. It increases, and after it decreases. And this is the only situation that it decreases because there is a, a portal systemic shunt so the flow don't go into the liver, but outside from the liver. And this is explained that there is a, a very poor perfusion of the parenchyma, and this is a portal vein very low. And uh, uh, we have not the solution for the moment, but uh, we want to evaluate this curve to be able to predict uh, uh, and to detect the normal or poor situation. And this is our work today with Damien Doucet and Nicolas Gols. So uh, to conclude, uh, our objective is to make simulations uh, using ICG because uh, from a long time I work with uh, my colleagues that do mathematics uh, about uh, the uh, modelization of the liver on the 0D model and 3D models. This is a uh, modelization of the flow into uh, the hepatic vein. You see here, small bubble into the hepatic vein to be able to uh, modulate the flow. Uh, and we want to use ICG uh, in the silico world and to observe uh, the uh, opacifications of the digital twin with the ICG, or with a virtual ICG. And this is uh, a way to evaluate if our, mo if our model are correct or not, because if the curve are the same uh, in the real world, it means that it is possible to create a, a nice digital twin to be able to predict the consequences of uh, surgery or liver transplantation. So to conclude, the uh, of uh, living donor, it could be used to, to, to see the bile duct uh, when we cut uh, the convergences, especially when we do a right hepatectomy by laparoscopy uh, in the, in, for the living donor. And it could be useful also to check the outflow on the uh, graft, because obviously if there is an outflow block, especially in the anterior sector, there is a very poor ICG perfusion, and we see very clearly that. In the field of uh, cadaveric donor, and this is our main work, it's on this field, because we do only around 10 uh, living donor by year in France in my department. Uh, so in the living in the uh, calvary donors, this is highly predictive of primary non-function in patients without a visible ICG homogeneous announcement after 30 to 50 seconds. This is a first result about uh, uh, qualitative analysis. Clearly, it is uh, if there is no uh, homogeneous ICG. Uh, into the liver, this is uh, a poor situation, and we need to check uh, everything. Uh, first, the outflow after the portal vein, and perhaps there is a very high risk if it is a patchy like situation of retransplantation. It could be effective to a certain direction and intensity of the blow flow in the small artery when we want to do uh, a make, arteri uh, make shift. Uh, revascularization of the graft with a 
a small artery like a gastroepiploic artery, as an example. It is possible also to do uh, quantifications uh, of the fluorescence, and I have uh, shown you uh, some curve uh, that uh, be predictable according to one parameter of this curve uh, to uh, have a poor or, or good graph survival after ICG injection. And paradoxically, we think that uh, uh, when we have a very high uh, and very uh, quickly uh, parenchymal perfusion, it is a sign of good situation. It is exactly exactly the opposite, and to be honest, we don't know why. Uh, we have observed that when, when there is a slow and very progressive parenchyma fluorescent increase, it is associated with a better graft survival. Perhaps it is due to a phenomenon of saturation of the receptor, I don't know. We analyze it uh, for the moment uh, histologically. And for the future, uh, we hope that with this technique, we are able to uh, have an effective and potential tool for assessment of the splendid blood flow uh, to be able to be able to uh, uh, more more uh, accurately modulate the flow to decrease the risk of uh, hyperperfusion of hypoperfusion of uh, the liver at the end of the at the end of the transplantation. And obviously, we use also ICG perfusion to have the tools to do uh, mathematical modeling to create a digital twin with my colleague mathematician. Thanks a lot for your attention. We are now going to begin answering the questions submitted during today's presentation. Can this technology be used in the back table to identify branches? Any benefits for harvesting in LI G-related donors and C segmentation. Yeah, it's it could be it could be uh, used on the back table, uh, but it in, it uh, imposes an injection of uh, ICG on uh, the back table into the artery. And I think it's have been done by Japanese colleagues, uh, notably in the field of uh, liver transport in the in the living related uh, transportation because it could be used. Uh, to evaluate uh, the outflow, because even on the back table, if you inject some uh, a very small amount of ICG into uh, the portal vein, it could be useful to see if there is a normal uh, flow uh, outflow on the entire sector. So yes, it could be used, but it, it requires a very, very small amount of ICG uh, because if you inject too much ICG, there is a risk of a um, of, uh, uh, of phenomenon of clutching. There is uh, nothing to see if there is too higher, uh, too important uh, concentration of ICG. So the, the dose of ICG is 1.10 milligram by kilo. So a very small amount. Thank you. And um, maybe in addition to that question, um, can this technique be used or kidney transplant? Yes, probably, probably it could be used in kidney transplant also. But uh, there is uh, perhaps it could be it could be test if there is uh, the same uh, observational than us. To be honest, I never see nothing about that, but uh, theoretically it could be used. And uh, it's uh, perhaps interesting to see if uh, the increase of ICG into the kidney uh, need to be uh, as uh, ICG into the liver, slow and progressive. And uh, to be honest, I don't know, because uh, uh, obviously ICG have, uh, have been uh, captured by hepatocytes, and it is not the case for uh, for kine. So, I don't know, perhaps, perhaps, and we need to try. Thank you. Uh, another question that we had is, in how many cases of liver transplant, this technique, this technique had modified your surgical, surgical strategy? Uh, as I have said initially in my, in my talk, I think it is. We need to be very, very cautious with this technique because this technique is uh, an experimental technique. 
this technique uh, need to be validated in the prospective study. I am sure that it could be very interesting, but it is like ICG in general. It is necessary uh, to detect some details with ICG and to uh, check and to compare this result with other tools. It means that if you see uh, non-homogeneous perfusion of the liver, it could be due to outflow block, and you, you need to check if problem with uh, the hepatic vein, and it could be used uh, with uh, ultrasound and notably uh, ICG, uh, ICG, uh, notably across ultrasound with uh, with a bubble. So it could be uh, it could be interesting for that. Uh, but uh, in my experiences, I think I have modified my uh, my uh, strategy in around five five to five to eight percent of case. Thank you. In regards to time, that is all we have time for now. But we will get back to all the old, other open questions afterwards as well. And before we close, anything you want to add, Dr. Weber? No, no. Thanks a lot for this kind of invitation. And I hope that uh, this technology with, uh, will be more and more used in the liver transplantation. And I will be happy to present uh, the very, very final results of this study in the next meeting in Miami in the ESFJS uh, uh, conference. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Weber, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. On behalf of International Society of Fluorescence Guided Surgery, with grant funding from Diagnostic Green and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day.